How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and I wanted to do this sort of really informal camera rigging series since my last FX9 video seemed to do pretty popular and I'm always cycling through different camera builds depending on the job so I figured it'd be helpful for some people to just see how I use my cameras in different situations and offer that insight to YouTube. For this video, I'll be focusing on how I'll be rigging my Alexa Mini LF for the next few days on a specific job. Um, I'll be kind of doing a more ENG docu-style work where I'm just going to be on the easy rig for the most part and just kind of following the action as it happens. And for all you sticklers out there, I've added this lovely white surface where you can see all of the camera parts. All right, so kicking things off, um, this is basically how I always leave the camera in its smallest state. Um, with my case, I have room to leave the viewfinder bracket attached, so this is basically how I pull it out of the box, and all of this camera rigging usually, usually stays on. So really quick, I want to start on this guy right here. This is the CBP, and this is Aries. Um, kind of shoulder pad, and you're able to just go right onto the dovetail, so... Um, that's kind of the neat kind of innovation that Aries CBP has is that as you have your dovetail here, you can just pop it right on without having to slide it from the back or slide it from the front or whichever way. Um, it's got a two stage release. So as you can see here, um, at the forward position, it's in its locked position. So I can move that to the middle to where I can adjust the counterbalance really, really easily and then lock that position or if I just want to take it off I can just pull up this black tab here and release the entire thing straight off the dovetail. So really quick I got to put this on the camera here so this just slides in like so super easy and then there's a lock right here on this side and then also another great thing about the CBP is that even when the camera is on the dovetail I have a tremendous amount of uh, sliding adjustment here to adjust the counterbalance. So if I have a pretty chonkin lens, obviously I'd probably want to slide this back. And like I mentioned before, I usually prefer having the lens mount just right kind of on the center of the shoulder anyway for, for really good balance. So most often I'll, I'll be sending this back just like that. So really quick, I want to talk about the new viewfinder. Um, this is the MVF2 that are found on all of, uh, Ari's newer cameras, and it has a bunch of improvements over the original. It's a lot sharper, uh, it's a lot brighter, it's got an OLED screen in there, and possibly my favorite feature is that it uses this new connector, which is a coax express that has no uh, registration pin, so you can insert it at basically any direction without having to, you know, line up like something like a limo and just kind of spend 10 seconds just trying to plug in a, a damn cable. So that's probably one of my favorite features and you can just pull it out and um, while the camera's on and then if you need to take off the EVF for whatever reason you could do that and then when you put it back on it's as simple as that. The new Alexa 35 viewfinder bracket um, they're actually using a square design here so they went away with the 19 mil rod. So the reason for that is because as you loosen the thumb screw to adjust the position, it ends up just kind of falling like that. Um, so that kind of problem has been alleviated with the Alexa 35. It hasn't really been an issue for me, but it's just one of those small ergonomic improvements Ari's made. All right, so next up is the power splitting box and I just have a gold mount plate on mine. So this is where you have a bunch of accessory ports for power here. And this attaches, similar to the CBP, just right on to the RAB. And the nice thing about this is that you can either mount it uh, more traditionally on the back, just like that, or you can even mount it to the top of this bracket here, which I've actually done a few times, and I actually quite like doing it, especially if I'm kind of filming in tight spaces, and I always usually end up kind of banging the walls behind me whenever the, the battery is mounted right to the back here. But when it's on the top, it just shortens up the camera significantly and it just makes it a little bit taller. So oftentimes, if I'm filming in a really, really tight space, I'll just put this right up here to kind of shorten up the camera. So 
So a couple of people have been asking me my thoughts on the new B-mount standard that's found on the Alexa 35. I think it's super cool and I think it's a neat new standard. I, I think at this point it was necessary for the Alexa 35 because it draws so much power. For example, that camera draws, I think, around 90 watts of power, whereas like something like this, like the Mini LF or the Venice, those draw at around 65 watts, I believe. So it's always annoying when you have to reinvest in a new set of batteries and plates just to accommodate a new standard. But I think at the same time, it was definitely necessary at this point. Apple did the same thing when they did away with the regular size USBs and, and went to USB-C for their MacBooks and I, all of their computers for that matter. Everyone was always complaining and moaning about, oh, Apple's always changing things. It's so annoying. I can't use my old connector. But if you think about it, USB-C, that form factor has a lot of potential and a lot of throughput in terms of bandwidth and just what it what is able to travel through, say something like a Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4 standard. So. I couldn't even imagine using a USB 3.0 uh, hard drive to dump all of this footage onto now. And to be honest, I haven't really seen much more of those anymore. So I still think it's really cool that the plate is actually really, really thin and basically it allows for mounting directly on the camera body itself. And all the some of the extra pins allow for some communication uh, for battery percentages and stuff like that. And, and you can actually daisy chain different batteries. I think it's a cool standard. Um, it's not something that I'm going to be jumping into quite yet because all of my cameras and accessories run off of standard 14 volt batteries. So until I spring for an Alexa 35, I'll probably be sticking with my standard gold mounts. So I'm going to swing this camera around so I can show you the MSB2. And it's just the side bracket right here. And I really like the direction area has gone in terms of the Alexa Mini accessory. So you have this kind of side bracket with obviously a lot of mounting points here. But you also have this 19mm uh, rod console mounting area. So for this, I'll usually put a lens motor or kind of any other accessories. And the nice thing about that is that it doesn't actually travel with the shoulder pads. So if I wanted to adjust the front to back, if I had a rod here, this would all move together and I can adjust this or even take this straight off onto a gimbal or onto a Steadicam without having to touch my rods, which is really, really handy. So for this build, I won't actually need a lens motor since I'll be pulling focus myself. So right here, instead of a lens motor, I'll just mount my A box for in case audio needs to jack in um, so that I can get camera audio. But before I do that, I actually want to attach this guy right here. This is the side accessory bracket that you can kind of pick up optionally for this camera. And so what I usually do is I, this is where I put uh, video transmitters or you know, any other accessories like that. In this instance, I have a little wedge plate to attach my transmitter. And then also down here, a little kind of mounting bracket for tentacles. Most sound people I work with usually use tentacles and I actually own a bunch of tentacles myself. So I actually leave both of these accessories bolted on here and I just leave this in my Alexa AKS case and I'll throw this on whenever I need. I don't typically include this on rentals um, because it is an extra piece. Um, so that way I'm able to leave these two bits kind of bolted on and just chuck them in my AKS case.
So on my Teradek here, I have a little wedge plate from one camera that just slots right into this side bracket here, really securely and really quick and easy to remove. Um, Ari actually also has a video transmitter bracket that kind of does the same thing. Um, the reason I like this uh, wooden camera one a little bit better is because um, one, I'm able to get the, the bracket actually a little bit higher than normal. Normally, since this sits, uh, since the transmitter sits on the bottom of the, on the top of this bracket, you actually have to mount this pretty far down and you actually end up wasting a lot of these uh, mounting points here. So that's one reason. Another reason is that for whatever reason, the redesign with the new Bolt 4Ks, they don't really kind of line up kind of really, really well. You have to kind of mount it uh, this way with the ports facing forward um, on the actual transmitter bracket. And for me, I'd rather have it face this way. So I have a kind of shorter cable run from here to the actual SDI port. So for this job, I'll just be on the easy rig all day. So I don't actually think I'll need the shoulder pad here at the bottom. So I'll probably just skip it. And then that way I can just shave off a few pounds off of the camera package. So by losing my shoulder pad, I also lost my 19 mil rails, um, which I'll need for my follow focus. So instead of 19 mil rails, I'll actually use this uh, lightweight adapter for 15 mil rods. And this just mounts right here um, on the bottom of the CBP. And then that way I'll be able to run my own follow focus. So this is the follow focus I've been using for the past six months. It's the Bright Tangerine Revolver. Um, it's super, super well built, super, super sturdy, and it actually supports both 19 mil and 15 mil. Um, and since obviously I'm running in 15 mil for this job, um, I can just take off this adapter bracket like so. And then adapt this right onto my 15 mil rails. So since we'll be doing some ENG docu-style coverage over the next few days, um, we'll be using some zoom lenses. So here I have the Cata Ace, the DZOs. And to be honest, I haven't used these a ton lately because I've been normally rocking a lot of FX9 stuff with a lot of the native Sony glass. So I bought these so that I could have something that covers a uh, large format, i.e. the Alexa Mini LF. So at least this way, I have some sort of zoom option to throw on here, and these will be perfect for the next few days. Lastly, I'll throw in a map box to help reduce flares and also if we want to drop in any filters on the day.
All right, last thing I wanted to add to the camera is my seven inch monitor. And I love using monitors like these, especially when I'm doing a lot of easy rig stuff so I can get the monitor in a much better position since I usually kind of end up steering the easy rig and kind of operating from the side. I usually like have a, having a monitor um, that's kind of off, like opposite to what an AC would use and just facing me. So I'm actually using the small HD Cine 7, and the nice thing about this 7-inch monitor is that it actually communicates with the camera via Ethernet. And to get into that, all I need to do is go into camera control, select my camera, and then hit connect. And then here you can see all of the camera parameters that I can go in and change. I can go in here and change the frame rate or even change my project rate from here, and I have full access via the touch screen. And this is a really nice option if I didn't have the EVF attached for whatever reason, or if I just wanted to kind of go into red mode and have everything be accessible from the monitor. You're not actually able to go as far deep into the menus as you are with the DSMC2 cameras, but it is still nice being able to change most of your settings via the monitor itself. So here you have it. This is the final completed build. Um, I'll be mainly on the easy rig for the next two days, so. This is kind of how I would normally run any camera in that situation. So hopefully this video is helpful in some way. It's always really interesting seeing other people's builds and how they like to configure their cameras given different types of projects. So if you have any questions, obviously feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.